In 1561, a mass sighting of a celestial phenomenon was reported over Nuremberg, Germany. It was said that there was a great space battle and even a crash landing outside the town. Around dawn on April 14, 1561, residents of Nuremberg saw a strange event in the sky. There were hundreds of spheres, cylinders, and other oddly shaped objects that moved erratically overhead. People described it as an aerial battle. It was followed by the appearance of a large, black, triangular object and then a large crash outside of the city. A broadsheet news article was printed later that month, describing the event. In the morning of April 14, 1561, at daybreak, between 4 and 5 a.m., a dreadful apparition occurred on the sun, and then this was seen in Nuremberg in the city, before the gates and in the country, by many men and women. At first there appeared in the middle of the sun two blood-red, semicircular arcs. Many globe-like structures and few rod-like structures also appeared. They started to fight among themselves for an hour. After that, they began falling down on earth as if they all burned. The phenomenon has been interpreted by some modern UFO enthusiasts as an aerial battle, possibly of extraterrestrial origin. Most skeptics have dismissed the phenomenon claiming it to be a sun dog. On July 30, 1915, after the U-28 sunk the British steamer Iberian, an explosion occurred, in which along with the debris, a creature resembling a gigantic crocodile was seen, which quickly disappeared from sight. SMU-28 was a Type U-27 U-boat that served in the First World War. It was commissioned into the Imperial German Navy on June 26, 1914, with Freiherr George Gunther von Forstner in command. On July 30, 1915, Freiherr von Forstner reported a mysterious event after the U-28 sunk the British steamer Iberian. According to the commander, the wreckage remained beneath the water for approximately 25 seconds, at a depth that was clearly impossible to assess, when suddenly there was a violent explosion which shot pieces of debris, among them a gigantic aquatic animal, out of the water to a height of approximately 80 feet. This creature was witnessed by the commander, the chief engineer, the navigator, and the helmsman. The commander reported that he couldn't identify the creature, but he said that it resembled a crocodile. It was about 60 feet long, with four limbs resembling large webbed feet, a long, pointed tail, and a head which also tapered to a point. No photograph of the creature was taken as the animal sank out of sight after 10 or 15 seconds. In 1917 near Fátima, Portugal, a crowd of people gathered and watched the skies as a multicolored sun appeared to dance without being blinded from their eyes' direct focus on it. In the spring of 1917, three Catholic shepherd children living near Fátima, Portugal, reported apparitions of an angel and a prophecy. According to the prophecy, prayer would lead to an end to the Great War, and on October 13 of that year, the Lady Angel would reveal her identity and perform a miracle so that all may believe. The news of the prophecy quickly spread and many pilgrims started visiting the area. On October 13, 1917, a large crowd had gathered near Fátima, Portugal. According to many witnesses, after a period of rain, the dark clouds broke and the sun appeared as an opaque, spinning, disk in the sky. It was said to be significantly duller than normal and was casting multicolored lights across the landscape, the people, and the surrounding clouds. The sun was then reported to have careened towards the earth before zigzagging back to its normal position. Not all witnesses reported seeing the sun dance. Some people only saw the radiant colors, and others, including some believers, saw nothing at all. The only known picture of the sun taken during the event doesn't show anything unusual. 
The claim of the miracle of the sun has received many criticisms from theologians, scientists, and skeptics. Some believe that it is a product of psychological factors such as the power of suggestion, while according to others, it may have been a combination of optical effects and some meteorological phenomena. The reality of the event is still a mystery. In 1967 a huge flying object, seen over the harbor in Nova Scotia, where it hovered for a while and then crashed into the water. The object was never identified even though two local residents reported a floating object in the waters of Shag Harbor. On the night of October 4, 1967, at about 11.20 p.m., at least 11 people saw a low-flying, lit object heading towards Shag Harbor, a tiny fishing village in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia. Multiple witnesses reported hearing a whistling sound like a bomb, then a whoosh and finally a loud bang, indicating that something had crashed into the waters of the harbor. The initial report was made by local resident Lori Wickens and four of his friends. Driving through Shag Harbor on Highway 3, they spotted a large object descending into the waters off the harbor. Assuming an aircraft had crashed, Wickens contacted the RCMP detachment in Barrington Passage, Within 15 minutes, 10 RCMP officers arrived at the scene. But before any attempt at rescue could be made, the object started to sink and disappeared from view. Within half an hour of the crash, local fishing boats went out for a rescue mission but could find no survivors, bodies, or debris. The next day it was determined that no aircraft were missing. When the Royal Canadian Air Force was informed of the crash, they labeled it as a UFO report. In 1977, SETI researchers detected an unusual radio signal lasting 72 seconds that came from a vacant area in constellation Sagittarius. Astronomers have looked for the same signal, but it was never detected again. In 1973, Ohio State University assigned the now-defunct Big Ear Telescope to the Scientific Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence SETI. On August 15, 1977, the telescope received a strong narrowband radio signal which lasted for the full 72-second window. The signal appeared to come from the constellation Sagittarius. The anomaly in the signal was detected a few days later by astronomer Jerry R. Emin while he was reviewing the recorded data. Emin spotted a series of values of signal intensity and frequency that left him and his colleagues astonished. He was so impressed by the result that he circled the alphanumeric sequence 6EQUJ5 on the computer printout and wrote the comment, wow, on its side leading to the event's widely used name. Despite several subsequent attempts by Emin and others, the signal has not been detected since 1977. Many hypotheses have been presented as to the origin of the signal, including natural and man-made sources, although none of them adequately explains the result. So, it is still believed that the WOW signal may have been an alien radio transmission, In 1994, Oakville, Washington, experienced a rainstorm in which gelatinous blobs fell onto a farm. The blobs were examined and found to contain human white blood cells, but they did not contain nuclei, which is something human white cells do have. On August 7, 1994, during a rainstorm, Blobs of a translucent gelatinous substance fell at the farmhouse of Sunny Barklift in Oakville, Washington. Each blob was about half the size of a grain of rice. Shortly afterward, Barklift's mother Dottie Hearn suffered from dizziness and nausea and was rushed to the hospital. Barklift and one of his friends too, began suffering from bouts of fatigue and nausea after handling the blobs. Even Barclith's kitten died after contact with the blobs. 
Later, it was reported that the maladies of Barclay's mother may have been due to an inner ear condition and not due to the blobs. In order to identify the blobs, Barclay contacted his mother's doctor, Dr. David Little. Dr. Little ran some tests at the hospital and reported that the blobs contained human white blood cells. When the blobs were examined by Washington State Department of Ecology's Hazardous Materials Spill Response Unit, they found that the blobs contained cells that lacked nuclei. But human white blood cells contain nuclei, so they were not a byproduct of a human body. Many theories have been presented to explain the appearance of the blobs, but none of them have proved to be correct. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.